Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Mark, there's very few people who can, who can pronounce my last name, Bronkhorst. <laughs> so well done, done with that. Um, and uh, uh, we have some South African friends here as well. And uh, so Bronkhorst, Bronkhorst Sprite, that's our last name. Now back home, we speak Afrikaans. We don't speak English. Um, our children don't speak English. We try to teach them a little bit, but our home language is Afrikaans. My parents speak Afrikaans. So I have my friend from Congo for the come see you it's for Hulle. It's Afrikaans behoort, now they can hear and they can understand. I'm going to ask my wife to just quickly come and greet you uh, this morning. This is Zandia, my wife. And uh, yes. Hello. <laughs> um, I just want to share something real quick. Uh, when uh, I came here on the plane from Orlando, um, it was a very early morning flight. And as I ascended through the sky, it was like this blanket of clouds that we had to go through. And um, it, it took my breath away. And, um, and God showed me it's like this veil that this cloud represented. And as I went into the heavens, it's like I heard his voice so clearly. It's like I saw angels. It was heaven. And then as, um, and I had such an amazing time with God on that flight. And as we, um, I did a, a layover in um, uh, Fort Lauderdale. And as we descended again, it was like the clouds departed. And there was um, like a wetland, you know, just, just water. And as I looked down, there was a reflection, and, um, and what was amazing to me, God reminded me of this. He said, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And then he goes on and says that, but with an unveiled face, as beholding within the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed from glory to glory. And I experienced how that water represented a mirror, and it represented earth, and how we with our walk with God represents heaven on earth. And, um, and the clarity of that and, and the reflection wasn't the clouds, it wasn't the veil, the reflection was the sun behind the clouds. And it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity to be here. We are grateful to be here. There's nothing that pleases me more than to preach to minister the word, and uh, I'm honoured that God would allow me and give me uh, that position to speak His word. And uh, thank you, Pastor Linda. It's also great to meet you in the last couple of weeks, and we we're looking forward to spend more time with you. It was great to see Pastor Mark, but we would love to have more of you. And uh, <laughs> um, David in Southwest Campus, we greet you, and those of you that's watching online as well with us, and uh, Hannah and uh, Tiffany and Luke, and then I mean, just we had so many people that we met throughout this last couple of weeks. So it was a blessing to be here, and we thank God for that. Let's uh, open up the Word, and we can start to read. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your Word this morning, Lord. I want to firstly start, and I want to recognize your Holy Spirit in this room. Holy Spirit, you are our special guest this morning. We invite you into this room. Thank you that you are here already. Holy Spirit, we pray for your manifested presence in this moment. Thank you, Father, for Southwest Campus right now to touch them. Those that are watching online, we pray for your tangible presence in their living room, in their car, wherever they are watching or listening this broadcast from. We declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. Beginning of this year, God gave me a word for the year. It started, I prayed for a word for us as a family, and I normally don't wait upon God and get a word for a nation or our nation, South Africa. I pray and I, and I receive a word for us as a family. When God can speak to you, He can speak through you. And so I first waited upon Him to speak to us as a family, and He gave me a word beginning of this year. And as He gave me the word, He showed me what is going to happen this year. And then He said, Andre, I'm going to give you a strategy. And this is what I really feel about 2020. It's a year, there's two things. It's a year of strategies, and it's also a year of reset. God is setting, resetting the church in 2020. There's a reset on the world. And he said, I'm going to give you a strategy and how to navigate through this year. And I remember it clearly. He said, Andre, as you apply this strategy, it will determine the level of victory 
that you will have in 2020. And then in January, um, I started to travel and the Lord spoke to me one morning. He said, Andre, I'm going to open global platforms for you this year. But I ask one thing of you, that where I send you, that you would take this word as, as a beacon of fire, that you would run with this because I'm going to use this to equip. And the word, what God showed me in a vision, I'm going to weaponize my people as you share this word. So they will be victorious in this year, 2020. Now, obviously, when I received the word in January, I didn't think much of it. Uh, it was a great word, but then as stuff started to unfold throughout this year, I started to see the importance of this word, God's word. Now, my wife said something, uh, I think this morning or yesterday, she said, um, 2020 is not over yet. And I really believe that God is going to move in the next month more than He's done in this entire year. And so you get ready for acceleration, get ready for things. And I, I just feel in my spirit, we're going to be surprised. There's still something that God has for 2020 that has not been unveiled yet. I've sensed there's a surprise coming. You're going to be surprised. The world is going to be surprised at what God's going to do, how He's going to turn and shift things by the end of this year. And so we're not at the end yet, but I want to share this with you to weaponize you this morning to be ready. Now, this is for everyone, everyone that's in this room. doesn't matter how young or old you are, God is weaponizing you to be ready and to finish strong this year, 2020. Amen? It's okay to say, say amen. It's not a Hebrew word. You can just say it. It's, a, it's kind of that you're in agreement. Okay. <laughs> Luke 15, 11. Now, when you read the entire Old Testament, one thing you need to understand, the Old Testament represents a king and a servant. When we read, we say kings and servants, kings and servants. When you read the New Testament, it is a father and a son, a father and a daughter. So all the parables, everything is about we see God and we see Jesus. And we see the father and son, father and daughter. And we start to pick up the heart of God, the character of God in the New Testament as we read. Now, parables was one of the ways that they used to teach because they would tell a story. And so it's not just a story. He's using the parable in trying to release revelation. That's what he's trying to do. Now, years ago, I went to Israel and I sat with a rabbi and he explained something to me. He said, Andre, the word that you read has three levels of revelation. The first level of revelation is ink on paper, what you read. First level of re revelation, when you open a Bible and you read. The second level of revelation is someone that received revelation and they're sharing it with you. What I'm doing this morning is I'm sharing revelation from a second level. But the deepest level of revelation in the Word is when God Himself speaks to you through the Scripture. It's the deepest level. And this is what I'm praying for this morning. I'm praying that as I share this, this strategy with you for this year, that God would give you revelation. That it would not be second-hand revelation, but that God would open your eyes and you would see even deeper than I have seen in this passage or in the Scripture. He would open up your eyes. He would show you even more than what I'm going to share with you uh, this morning. I'm limited to what I can share and give. And so he's got way more than he can give. So Luke 15, 11, again, we, we know the story about the prodigal son and we celebrate the prodigal son. It's all about the son has returned. But what we don't realize that in this parable, that it's not just a father, but this father represents God. It's his heart for the lost. It's his heart for his children. And we can pick up the character of God in this parable as we read it. And so if I had to give this parable a theme, I would say the hero father and the two idiot sons. That's what I would call it. Because the hero in this story is not the son, it's the father. The way that he handles this whole, uh, this whole parable and story with his son, we can see God's heart for humanity and for his sons and daughters. And so Luke 15, 11 starts, it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. And we know so the son comes up to him, to the father, and the son says, give me my inheritance, I want to leave. I want to make my own decisions. Now, important, it's not rebellion. 
It is completely normal in Jewish culture for young men to receive their inheritance in the beginning of their life. And so he comes completely normal. He's saying, Dad, I'm ready to go. Give him my inheritance. I'm going to leave now. Now, what does inheritance do? Inheritance enables you to make your own decisions. There's a lot of parents today that says to their children, as long as you live in my house, I'll pay your bills. And when you leave this house, you're on your own. This is earthly parents. <laughs> Not this father. He says, I'm going to give you inheritance. I'm going to equip you that financially you'll be able to make your own decisions. And so he releases his son and he goes. What's important is that when the son left the house, the father's heart never left him. I want to share a principle with parents today. When your children leave, don't make it impossible for them to return. Let them go, but let your heart go with them that once they repent, that they can come back. Because a lot of people leave our lives, but we make it impossible for them to return. We say to them, when you leave now, it's over. No. We have to have grace for people. There's different seasons of relationships and friendships in our lives, and some are seasonal. And so if they have to go, release them, but keep that door open that when they want to return, that they can come back. And so the father sends him off. He says, go, here's your blessing on inheritance. Go and make your own decision. Quickly, the son gets to a place in his life where he has squandered his wealth, and he gets to a place where he is reminded how the servants are treated back home. And the son says, if I could just be a servant in my father's house, I'll have better circumstances than I'm, what I'm living in right now. And I am fully convinced that it was the Holy Spirit that ministered to that son. You see, God has assigned a Holy Spirit to our lives. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to be with us until he returns and to remind us of his will and his plan. And so constantly in our lives, we are in seasons where we get this impression where we feel that this is not where I'm supposed to be. There's something else. There's something greater that's waiting for me. And here the son comes to his senses. He realizes that this is not what I'm made for. There's something far greater that I'm called for. And I believe that it's the Holy Spirit that ministered to him. And then the son comes to repentance. And he says, I am willing to go back and just be a servant again in my father's house. And that is what I believe is true repentance. True repentance is always the willingness to start over again. A lot of people say they repent, but they repent with demands. They say, I'll come back, but I demand this and this and this. No, that's not true repentance. True repentance is, I'm willing to start over. I'm willing to forget the past and start over in this relationship. And so I believe that the son came to full repentance. And he starts to make his way back home to the father's house. Now, what I love about the Father, Father God, is that He makes it easy for Him to return. Because most parents will wait for their children to return and they would sit in their living room and they would make them walk all the way to the front door, knock a couple of times and they don't answer, knock, make them really feel bad about what they've done and then open the door. Not this father. This father's heart is still with his son. And so he's waiting for him, expecting him to return, and he sees him return. And then he doesn't wait for him at the gate. He runs out and he meets him halfway. This is what I see in the Spirit, what happens when people return to God. The day when we decide it's time to come back to God, immediately in that moment, the restoration process starts to take place. And so he runs to him and he meets him halfway. And this is the strategy for 2020 this year. Luke 15, verse 22. He says, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And there's a restoration process that started. God spoke to me in January and he said, Andre, the keys to victory in 2020 is the robe, covenant, and sandals. This is the ring. This is the strategy for 2020. And so the father immediately 
says, bring a robe for him. He puts a robe on the son now. There's a difference between a robe of a servant and a son. A kingdom, a king had a robe, and on that robe, there was an embroidery that marked the king's signature. And so immediately, he said, bring him the best robe. And so he puts his household, his kingship upon the son. And immediately, remember, it's not who the person is, it's, it's what they wear. So immediately, it doesn't matter what he's done or where he's coming from. The father is reinstating his authority right there. He's putting him back exactly where he was in that position, in that level of authority, immediately reinstating it in that moment. Secondly, he says, bring a ring for his finger. Today we know that when we enter a covenant with a person, we give them a ring as a symbol that we're entering a covenant with them. And so the father says quickly, bring a ring for his finger, and he puts the ring on his, on his finger, and now the father restores covenant with him. He brings him back into covenant. And the more I study this, I see how strategically this father is doing everything that he's doing. Now, what is covenant? And this is one thing that I believe is really important. We need revelation of covenant. Church, we don't understand covenant. We need revelation of covenant. And so covenant, I tried to explain it to you. When I, I dated my wife before we got married or engaged, we were dating and I had to work that relationship. I had to buy flowers, I had to make coffee, I had to buy chocolates, I had to work it, I had to win her. But then one day we got to a place where we, I asked her to marry me and she agreed and now that day we entered a covenant. Today, if I forget to buy chocolates or roses, she's not going to divorce me because we have entered a covenant now and covenant is always above works. It's above that. And so the father brings the son into covenant, puts a ring on his finger and is very strategically now, husbands, it's still okay to buy roses and chocolates and that I'm not saying you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> but it's not limited to what you can do for the person anymore. You've entered a covenant. The father restores covenant with him and he does it strategically because back home, you have to remember as this whole story unfolds, the whole household, they're looking at this. The servants are all there and they see the son return. Now the servants, they're upset because they've been working and toiling while the son has gone. And remember, everything that the son had to do, they had to take over when he left. And so the servants cannot wait for the son to return so that they can judge him, condemn him, and say, where have you been while you've been squandering your wealth? We had to take care of this and this. We had to do all of these works. Where have you been? They can't wait for him to return. But the father puts him back into covenant. And as he does that, now the servants has nothing on him. They can't hold anything against him anymore because he's been restored. Then the father says, bring sandals for his feet. The sandals represents that you are qualified. When the disciples were sent out, he said, don't take anything with you, just the sandals on your feet. You are qualified for this job. Go out, preach the gospel. He sends them out, they are qualified. I believe that these three things are crucial for this year, 2020. Your authority that God has given you, number one, the covenant that you have with God and the fact that you are qualified. I sense in the beginning of this year that we will have three shakings that will take place in 2020. The first shaking is health being shaken. Second shaking is the economy globally that's being shaken. And the third shaking is a religious shaking that we're entering right now globally, religion being shaken. All these shakings are natural shakings that's taking place. If your life is built in the spirit, these shakings will not affect you in any way. But if your entire life is built only on the natural, it will be a massive shaking to you. It'll feel like your whole life falls apart. But I'm speaking to sons and daughters tonight, to this morning. Your life is built in the Spirit. You're standing on that rock. And so even as we go through this, you will not experience a shaking. Now He's giving us a strategy for these shakings. Number one, He's giving us authority over sickness and disease. But right now, it is crucial for every believer to stand up and exercise their authority. There's some giants that has to fall before next Sunday. 
You can't sit here to, uh, this morning and say, well, I'll ask Pastor Mark to pray next Sunday. No, no. There's some things that you're going to have to face on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And as a believer, you're going to have to stand up in your authority. And you're going to have to confront that thing. There's some things that will not change until you confront it. When you confront it, it will be changed. And so number one, sickness and disease has to go. And God is giving us authority to break any form of sickness and disease. And so this morning I prophesy over every person in this room right now and those that's watching from Southwest and also online, I declare this morning that no sickness and disease will come close to you. That if a virus tried to enter your home, that that virus will die at your door. It will not touch you or anyone that you love or that's close to you. We command any sickness, disease, anything from the enemy to leave your life right now in Jesus' name. Then secondly, God has given us covenant. And suddenly the whole world comes to a standstill and we cannot work as much. We can't put in the hours that we've put in before. And the whole world system is input, output. You, you work so many hours and this is the salary that you get. That's the world system. But we're not in the world system. We're in covenant. And so what does that mean? Even though you can't work and put in the time and energy, God still prospers you. There's businesses this year that's going to be more prospered in 2020 this year than ever before. In the time of a crisis, in the time where they were limited to what they can do, you're going to see covenant kick in in your life and your business and you're going to exit this year 2020 in a better condition than you've entered it in the beginning of this year. And so expect, expect a financial breakthrough to take place and to continue to take place. I declare prophetically over you this morning, you're going to be so blessed that you're going to feel ashamed of it. You're going to feel that, how can I tell people about what's happening to me? Because I'm not experiencing the storms that they're experiencing. I'm not, a, I'm not going through what they're going through. I don't know why, why things is working out because I'm not, it's not that I'm doing something. It's covenant that's at work at this moment in God's people's lives. And then number three, qualified. We are entering a time right now where religious shaking is busy taking place and God is shaking the church globally. And we're gonna see religion standing up against one another. And what I saw in the spirit was not one religion challenging another religion, but what I saw in the spirit is one church that arises against another church. When the Lord spoke to me about this, He said, Andre, you will have no part in it. You will, you will not say anything negative about a man or woman of God. You will have no part in this. I want to say to you that we're entering it right now. It's going to start in November. We're going to see a lot of stuff in the news globally. It's like that's going to happen. Churches are going to blame one another. They're going to say, you, we were supposed to do this. No, you were supposed to do it. Now it's your fault. Now it's your fault. They're looking for someone to pay the price. Yet this is the enemy that's coming in to steal, kill, and destroy. But I believe that God is weaponizing us this morning that we are ready to be victorious in the season. Now Genesis chapter 13 verse 9, and this is what I experienced the end of this year and in also entering 2021. Abraham is a man that understood covenant. And I want to say to you as a church, I believe that we're entering an era of covenant. We don't understand covenant. God's going to give us revelation in the next couple of years. God's going to take us into covenant like never before. We know what works is. You know, people have become generous givers, but not generous receivers. And I believe that God is busy covenant is teaching us to become generous receivers in the season. Now, Abraham, God speaks to Abraham. Abraham is a man of covenant. God says to Abraham, Abraham, it's time for you to break this partnership. You have to end this journey with Lot. Abraham is a man of covenant. And so he acts in covenant. He says to Lot, Lot, you choose. I'm not going to choose. You choose. You go left and I'll go right. You go right and I'll go left. You make the decision. Because he understands covenant. Blessing, uh, Lot, Lot is, a, is symbolic of a person that runs after blessing. They run their entire life trying to find the blessings. They run from one church to another church to another church. They're trying to find where the blessing is. But Abraham is a man of covenant. And he says, you choose. And so Lot chooses the most prosperous land. He goes into that. Abraham takes the desert. But as Abraham walks into the desert, because he's in covenant, there is a little stream of water that follows him into the desert. I believe 
that 2021, end of this year into 2021, the Church of God, CFAN, I declare this over you this morning, that you will not run after blessings anymore. But in 2021, you will walk with the blessing of the Lord upon your life. And where you go, the blessing of the Lord will be. Who you come in touch with, the blessing of the Lord will be there in that moment. What does it mean? It means where you go, things start to change. You buy property in an area. And as you buy that property, the entire area's value of property starts to rise because you bought into that. You put your signature down on a contract and suddenly it just works out and it prospers because you signed. You enter a business, it's at the brink of collapsing, but because you are there, suddenly it becomes prosperous and it starts to work because you are there. You're entering an area of sickness and disease, but as you walk in, the blessing of the Lord is upon your life and healing starts to be distributed around you because you are there. We will no longer run after the blessings anymore. We will become covenant children and we will walk with the blessing of God upon our lives. I'm here this morning to remind you of that, that the blessing has rested upon your life. You don't have to run and seek and find it somewhere. You are a carrier of the blessing of God in your life. That is the covenant of the Lord that's at work at this moment in your life. Amen. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for every person in this room right now. Father, I pray this morning for, Lord, the rope. And I remind every person this morning of the authority that you have given them right now. And so, Father, I pray for that authority right now that they would stand up, every believer, doesn't matter how old, young they are, but they would walk in the authority that you have given them. I declare that in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for covenant. Remind us of covenant. We have a covenant with you. And that covenant is above our ability, our works, what we can put in. It's above that. And I pray for covenant right now that people will be reminded of the covenant that you have with them at this moment. And then lastly, I come against any attack upon God's people today that says that they're unqualified. They're not ready. They cannot do it. I declare this morning that you are qualified. You are chosen. You are the person that God has chosen for this season to stand up. I declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're entering a time where I do sense that the enemy is going to try to attack people and say that, who gave you the authority? Who put you in that position? Who gave you permission? Today, I celebrate 20 years of ministry and people ask me, how does it feel? Do you feel more bold? And I say to them, it feels to me after 20 years, it really feels to me like now I know less than when I started. But what I boast in is the fact that God has qualified me that when the world didn't choose me, He chose me. And He put His hand on me and said, I qualify you, I send you out. And that gives me boldness to step out and to know that every time that I speak, that He will be there, His presence will be there, His angels will be there because He has qualified me. I have to tell you the truth this morning. No help is coming. Superman is not coming. Spider-Man is not coming. No one is coming. Jesus is returning, but when He returns, it's the end. No help is coming. God has qualified you. He has positioned you and He has given you the authority right now to act in this season. I can't tell you the importance of every believer taking up their authority right now and exercising that authority. Every believer, every believer. How do you do it? You speak. Speak against that storm. Speak against that sickness. Raise your voice. Open up your voice. Speak. As you speak, you release authority over that life. Immediately, the enemy attacks you and says, no, no, but what have you done last week? What about your past? What about immediately? Who are you? You're not qualified. You, you don't know the word. You didn't study. You don't have a degree. You're not, no, no, no. He has qualified not just the pastor or ministers or prophets. He has qualified his sons and daughters to exercise the authority that he has given them. Amen. Everyone as to exercise their authority. Amen. CFAN is entering a new season. No doubt that this ministry is entering a new season. And it's nothing like the old. It's nothing like the old. Nothing like what God has done in the past. I see that God is giving this ministry, CFAN, a new face. It's completely new. God is completely renovating it. He's doing a new thing. He's not copying the old anymore. We're entering a new season. 
And honestly, if I have to tell you, when we're entering a new season, I will rather be an amateur in the new than an expert in the old. We're entering a new place. And this is what I declared over CFAN this morning. Pastor Mark, you'll be an amateur in the new. You will not be an expert in the old. You will go into the new. You'll be a forerunner of what God is doing in the new. There's something new, fresh that God is doing. It's not a copy of the old. It's a new day. It's a new season. I know prophets always say it's a new season, but this is really a new season. This is new. We're entering a new season, a new era that we're entering to right now. God gave me a word over the church globally. He said, Andre, the future of the church is the entire fivefold ministry that comes back to the local church. And he said to me, Andre, the churches that does not embrace the fivefold will become extinct globally. I honor this church for celebrating the fivefold. I honor the leadership in this church for accepting the fivefold to come in. God is building the base once again, the foundation of the church. He's, he's, making, he's making the base strong once again so that we can function from here where we need to be. Amen? Yes, you. What's your name, sir, here? Doug, Doug quickly stand up. I, I can't remember if I ministered you before, but Doug, as I look at you this morning, I see a boldness that comes upon you like never before. God is giving you a boldness to speak up. And I declare this morning, no longer will you be silent. No longer will you be in the background. No longer will you be in the shade. God says, I'm calling you to the spotlight and I'm giving you the boldness to speak, boldness to open up your mouth. There's a wisdom that you carry that is supernatural. You have not touched or tapped into that, but the Lord's saying, as you speak, as you speak, the wisdom will be released. And I see that God is creating a platform. He's creating the room. He's creating, He's putting you in the spot. I see you sitting in a room of people, very qualified, very professional, and you're sitting in that room and they all are higher qualified than you. But then I see they're looking at you and they're giving you opportunity to speak. And I hear the Lord saying that you will have a word, you will have wisdom that will be above qualification or degrees or experience. It'll be above that because when you speak, you'll speak from heaven, insight into the spirit God will give you in the marketplace, the business world. Bless you, sir. You may be seated. Thank you. Amen. Sir, with the green there, right there. Yes. Stand, just quickly stand. God has spoken to you this morning when you left your home this morning. He spoke to you. The fact that you are here this morning is not your will. You did not plan to be here. I see the Holy Spirit woke you up this morning. He, I see everything, divine appointments. When you woke up this morning, everything happened just so that you could be here. It's because God has set an appointment with your life. And I'm here this morning to say to you, you'll never be the same. When you walk out those doors this morning, it is a new life for you. It's a new season, none of the old. I look at what you've been doing up until now in your life. Everything has been a struggle. It's been a hard work and there's no laziness in you. You're a hardworking person. But you've done everything, but you've not received the reward up until now. God is about to release the reward upon your life. And that reward is not gonna come because of your ability works, but because of the covenant that He has made with you. I'm here this morning to say that to you, you're a covenant child. You have every right to sit, to sit at the table than every other son and daughter have to sit at that table. Now there's a spirit of poverty that's trying to enter your life, that's trying to disqualify you. I, I'm here this morning to command that spirit to leave your life. No form of poverty, no form of the past, no form of struggles. I release you from that. That is not who you are. You are God's position. And the enemy has no right to touch you or your family or anyone close to you. Now I see a business that you're entering in the future. And it's, I look at it on the outside and, and so many people try to make a success of it. They couldn't get it right. But then I see you walking into that business. It doesn't look like much right now, but as you walk into it, God says, I'm gonna do something in that business that you will have a testimony of His grace, of His power, of His provision, and it'll be a testimony that only God could have done that because I see God lifting up that business and taking it above and beyond what people have expected that it would ever or could ever be, but through your life in this season. God has chosen you. He has qualified you. And the enemy has no right from this morning forth to disqualify you in any way. All of us have made mistakes, but I release you this morning of your past. I release you of even the, the remembrance, the thoughts of what you have done in the past. You will not even remember what has happened in the past, the mistakes that you've made. It's a new day and you're a new person in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Father. 
Quickly, I want to speak to Southwest Campus. Southwest Campus, I see a man sitting in the campus Southwest right now. And I see you sitting there, a man with incomplete brokenness. Brokenness. Your spirit is broken. You don't have vision, direction, nothing. You're broken. God is touching you this morning and is bringing life back to you. He's bringing strength and passion back to your life at this moment, Southwest Campus. I see a lady in Southwest Campus and I want to call you the lady in red this morning because in the spirit I see red, you're wearing red, lady in red. The same thing, I see you sitting there and this morning you did not come to Southwest Campus for yourself, but you came there for your family. You came there because of loved ones. I want to say to you this morning, God has heard your prayer and is intervening today. He's intervening in your life, he's touching your loved ones, He's mending broken relationships and He's bringing healing and restoration right now into your life at this moment. I declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.